80s house parties. House parties. Rituals. Rituals. Little demonic creatures. Creatures. And your toilet bowl will never be the same. Toilet bowl. After watching Ghoulies. Shout out to my good friend Christian Blatt for his YouTube show as our sponsor today called The Blatt Cast. His show focuses on pop culture with an emphasis on movies, television, and music. Some of his past guests have been Steve Carell, Seth MacFarlane, Dana Carvey, John Lovitz, Dennis Miller, and Dave Perner of Soul Asylum, and so many more. Definitely check that show out, guys. I wouldn't actually put Ghoulies into the category of a horror film. I didn't think it was actually horror. I really found it to be a little bit more comedic because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, the effects weren't worse, a little subpar. Here we go, We're, we don't agree again, what a surprise. The ghoulies, I will give you though, the little ghoulie creatures, they were nasty. They had this like mucus coming off of their teeth and out of their nose, which was pretty nauseating. I didn't like that at all. But then there was that scene where Rebecca and Jonathan are in the bedroom and they're getting a little bit know, sexy, having a good time, and the ghoulie pops up. Could you imagine being in bed with your significant other and this ugly creature with mucus co starts coming out of its nose and out of its mouth? Absolutely disgusting. A way to really kill the mood for me. Plus, some other things that I didn't really like about the movie, this really bothered me. The red wine didn't look like wine. It looked like fruit punch. And then when Jonathan's eyes turned green, that was so bad. And then think okay, about let, when, let me listen, that. one more now. When the father comes back to life, right? He's supposed to be this person that's been dead for quite a while. He comes up, his skin's all blue and green. He has perfectly white, straight, gorgeous teeth. And then he's got this nasty skin, but then you look at his arms and his hands and they're normal. Like, way to miss the mark on that. Okay, so let me touch a little bit on the green contact lenses that they use. So in order to have that effect, they used contact lenses that were a lot thicker than normal contact lenses and were filled with this liquid that would glow in the dark if you put a black light up to them. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, because they were so bulky, every time the actor would blink, yes. you would have this effect, what they were calling derp eyes you're looking this way and then this eye is looking up in this way <laughs> yeah so eventually they just left it and said there's not much we can do about it it's just part of the character but it was just because those the the contacts were so bulky and, and awkward yeah so then why not just take it out why make that part of the film it was a derp eye and it was it was like comical at that point he's looking one way he's and he's supposed to be this evil like being I, I don't know, Dan. It wasn't convincing to me at all. So Ghoulies is a movie I saw a long, long time ago, and I've only revisited a couple of times, so it wasn't really fresh in my mind anymore. And after watching it recently, I actually wish I watched it more times because now I have a new respect for it. It definitely fits that classic 80s horror. I mean, you have this movie that starts out with this ritual gone wrong. You know, Jonathan Graves comes in, you know, the, the lead, and, and he inherits his father's house. He finds the, the gravestone with the, the pentacle in it mm -hmm. and, you know, winds up doing the ritual at a party to try and bring these little, you know, little demons back out. I guess, I guess that's really the, the main theme of it is the, the de you know, bringing these little ghoulies back to life to you know do his bidding they're they're like his little slave minions yeah like that his father originally did years before right right so in that first scene of the film when it opens you see his father doing this ritual that then after you know jonathan notices the things in the house then he does the ritual and tries to bring back the little ghoulies right so you know we were talking about the contact lenses but you know they had to work on a very small budget i think it was around one million maybe a little over but not much over because they wound up losing money on production oh wow yeah you know, they ran mm -hmm. out of money uh before it was finished so there's a big misconception online where some sites are listing it as like a five million dollar budget which is just not true they mm -hmm. barely had a million and like i said they ran out of money shooting this film mm -hmm. and originally you know one of the studio pictures before this was called parasite was in 3d 
And they wanted to make Ghoulies in 3D mm-hmm. because of how cool, you know, that movie turned out. But then they found out it would have been $3 million minimum to film in 3D. And being that they only had like the $1 million budget, they they scrapped that idea and said, no, let's, let's not do that. Yeah, so that makes sense. There was this one scene in the film where there's a dinner party and all the friends are at the dinner and they have, they're all wearing glasses. So the idea was that if it was gonna be 3D, every time somebody put their glasses on, then you would be putting on your 3D glasses. Yeah. Yeah, so, and you're, I, I mean, you're, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but you are really a lover of 3D movies. Absolutely. Right, so I feel like that might've made it more, even better for you. Right, it was the same concept if you ever watched uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 6, I believe, Freddy's Dead. They had the same kind of cue. Mm-hmm. As soon as they put the glasses on, that was your cue to put your 3D glasses on. Mm-hmm. So that's what they wanted to do with Ghoulies, but unfortunately, because of the budget, it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. It's interesting they didn't change it after it was decided. I guess it, I guess it would have been too much money to go back and refilm the scene. Yeah, I mean, you can you can put movies in 3D now and just get the depth, but it's not going to have the same effect. Mm-hmm. So around the same time, we had uh, very similar movies being worked on. We had Critters and Gremlins. Right there, everybody. He's got the shirt on and everything. (laughs) And what happened was Warner Brothers actually went after them and uh, put a lawsuit and said that it was too close to Gremlins that they were Mm -hmm. working on. Even the logo was too close at the time and the concept of the film was too close. But then that lawsuit was shortly dropped thereafter. So back then there was a debate going on on if Critters and Gremlins were, you know, too similar to Ghoulies. But Mm -hmm. if you look when Ghoulies actually started, you know, it it was done long before either one of them. So, uh, you know, there there was no ripoff there, which is another big reason Warner Brothers dropped the suit, saying that it was too close to Ghoulies. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that it was started before. So Ghoulies actually came out in 1985. Correct, 1985. Yeah, and then Gremlins, wasn't Gremlins 1984? Or am I... Getting my dates mixed up. Possibly, here too. if you look back at pre-production and like when the Ghoulies started to be written as mm-hmm. critters as well, were both you know before Gremlins. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting too that for me the Ghoulies kind of look like a combination be- between an alien baby, a Mogwai, which was like the baby Gremlins, and like a little crazy little mucusy creature. Do you remember that scene in Spaceballs? where the little alien comes out of the guy's stomach after he orders the special. Mm-hmm. That creature reminded me so much of the ghoulies. I guess it's it's gotta be the mucus. It all goes back to the mucus for me. It's so gross, you, you guys. Like this mucus obsession. I know, it's, it grosses me out. Like, it was disgusting. It was just so in your face, I felt like. It was nasty. That's the point, though. Yeah. They wanna gross you out. Mm-hmm. I liked the little creatures. They were cool because they were like these little rubber suit puppets uh, and just they had their own unique little looks and uh i think they had said that they created about 10 puppets and then they narrowed it down to the final five to be made Mm -hmm. well they had kind of their own personalities too yeah (laughs) because of that i feel like right would you what genre would you put this movie in would you say it's a horror or would you personally put it into a different genre yeah, that's a big thing that they went back and forth with, too, is, you know, you, you can almost call it a horror comedy, but... Yes. Because they originally said the script was going to be darker. And then they changed it, you know, after the whole 3D debacle and said, well, let's make it a little bit more of a comedy because these creatures actually look kind of funny. It doesn't mm-hmm. look really like scary. In fact, mm-hmm. one of the puppets um, that came out of the toilet bowl, the big famous, you know, toilet bowl thing. Which almost didn't happen. That right. scene almost didn't even happen. But so go it, on. It, one of them looked like the creator of the creatures. So really? they wanted to make more comedy. And then mm-hmm. eventually they start going away from the comedy. And then it was just like you had this full-blown horror movie with little bits of comedy that just weren't really working. It's like, why are you throwing that in? So mm-hmm. that was a big thing. But with the toilet bowl thing, they did this ad com- campaign right? where mm-hmm. they went out with this concept of, you know, having the little guy popping out of the toilet bowl. So they went, they rent, they, they bought a toilet bowl then they did the photo shoot. And then uh, the original tagline was going to be ghoulies. They'll eat your ass. No, that I did not read about. Right. Oh, wow. So 
I forget if it was the director or somebody said, let's not go that far. How about let's change it to Ghoulies. They'll get you in the end. Ghoulies. They'll get you in the end. Now, what's funny about that is after that ad ran, like, now you're not going to see, like, horror movies being advertised, like, during the daytime, usually, on TV. But back then, they ran it during the day when it was, like, going towards, like, kids' cartoons. So now they got all these hate letters in from the parents mm -hmm. saying, thanks a lot. I was just about to have my kid perfectly potty trained. Now, after you're seeing your dumb ad campaign, my kid won't go in the bathroom. He's terrified. And then because they got so much hate mail, they were like, look, we got two options here. We need to pull the plug to make everybody happy and stop all these hate letters coming in. Or we just ride with it. And they just rode with it. Mm -hmm. And look how classic that, that you know, little ghoulie popping out of the toilet bowl is mm -hmm. because they stuck with it. Yeah, it was actually the executive producer's idea okay. later on for that ad campaign. So, bravo. <laughs> We're talking a lot about special effects and features. Um, how did you feel? You you did touch upon the fact that the ghoulies were puppets and you thought they were pretty cool. And it was started with 10 and then it was kind of chopped down to get the specific ghoulies that were used in the film. It wasn't CGI at all. How do you feel about that? Do you think that they were successful oh, in yeah. creating I mean, those effects? That's, that was a staple of the 80s horror movies, having like little rubber puppets, you know, and, and you could easily make that work with the mm -hmm. right lighting and the mucusy covered teeth and Ugh. stuff. So, yeah, even watching it now, yeah, you can tell the rubber puppets, no big deal. You look past that, you know, you're watching a movie, mm -hmm. but it's still now it's just so much cooler because it's that 80s horror with a little bit of comedy thrown in. So it just worked. Like, I thought the creatures were still scary enough mm -hmm. looking with a little bit of humor because they're little rubber puppets. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of comedy within the film. Like, I thought it was, like, kind of funny in some ways, the way that Rebecca was. Right. When she was in her hypnotic state, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, under a spell. It was just, yeah. Do you know that Mariska Hargitay, that was her breakout role? No. You didn't know that? No. Wow. So, and believe it or not, her scream in real life was so deep that they, her scream was a voiceover in the actual ends of the production. Wow. So it was co-written with Jeffrey Levy, but was he the actual writer or was it somebody else? He also wrote it with Lou Bercovici. Okay. Who wound up writing all four films. Your guy, what's his name? Four. Jeffrey Levy? Jeffrey Levy. Uh, he did not write part two for some reason. He's not listed. He's listed for all the others, but for some reason, his name isn't on part two. Did you see all four films? I did. Don't ask me to remember them. They were ages okay. ago. I remember at one point, I think the last one, they were like full size ghoulie suits. Like just they didn't even hide the fact they were little creatures anymore. They were just, you know, little people. My favorite characters in this film were the little people, Greta Gut and Grizzle. The actress who played Greta Gut is actually written down as the shortest actress ever to be in a film. And she's known for being in E.T. as well. Yeah, I actually like Mike, played by Scott Thompson. OK. He played the goofball in the film. Like, he provided the humor. He was the one that was wearing the, uh, like, steampunk-style sunglasses in the house. He was the one breakdancing on the floor and all his, you know, paraphernalia is flying out of his pockets. I don't know. It's just something about the goofball in movies. I either go for the badass or the goofball. And then this one, it was definitely the goofball. I liked him a lot. You know, he provided the humor. He actually brought in one of the scariest parts of the film for me, which was that, that doll, like, that looked like a jack-in-the-box or something. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, almost like a Dracula. Yeah, and you were waiting for it to come to life. And then it finally did. Right. Spoiler, it comes to life eventually. But that was the part that was the creepiest for me. It's those dolls. We're always going back to the dolls. Which gave you one of the worst worst deaths in the in the film. Yes. When he, the little Dracula-looking doll comes out at the girl. Now, he's so short, the girl's tall, but instead she just backs up into a corner, slouches down. <laughs> Well, he comes gently over and puts his hand gently around her neck. And then you got that long freeze frame of waiting for the ooze to come out of his eyes. And See, so you're saying that you don't agree with me, but I think in some ways you can understand where I'm coming from with my feelings. Yeah, on but this that movie. goes with the whole it's so bad, it's so good type of deal. Yeah, fair enough. We're talking a little bit about, you know, the cinematography itself. How did you feel about the edits? 
Did you feel like there were points that took you out of the film or kind of pulled you more into the present moment while you were watching? I didn't find anything wrong with it. I thought a lot of scenes were set up great. I mean, the darkness was great. Um, I know originally this was going to be like a one shoot location, you know, one one location for the, the whole shoot. And they wound up finding this estate mm -hmm. where they were able to use the whole grounds. Mm -hmm. So now they had multiple areas to shoot on, which expanded the film into more than what it was going to be. Yeah, I, I felt like I didn't feel like anything was missing from the scenery itself. It didn't feel like I got bored at any point either. So, I mean, I was really entertained the entire time. So one thing I found interesting about revisiting this movie and looking up stuff I hadn't you know, known before was the actor Michael DeBars is actually a singer who has sold hundreds of thousands of albums. He was the touring singer for a band called The Power Station, which was kind of a Duran Duran ripoff. And then he also wrote a really big 80s hit for a band called Animotion, and the song is called Obsession. And yes, you 80s fanatics out there, that Obsession song. Really? He wrote that. Wow, I like that song. How about you, did you find anything? I, I did, so Jonathan, the main character, Jeffrey Coombs originally auditioned to play the role. So you probably know him from the Reanimator series, and he starred in a lot of Star Trek episodes. Which is good, since he didn't get the role for this, <laughs> right. he wound up getting Reanimator. Yeah. There's also cool things about the music. Like yeah. Richard, Richard Howard Band um, scored more than 140 projects. Yeah. He was one of the, the scorers of the music. Shirley Ann Walker also. She was... Um, one of the first few female film composers working in Hollywood during her time, during her career. And she won two Emmy Awards during her career. So you had like an Emmy Award winner who was first starting out, mm -hmm. and then you had somebody who after this did 140 more jobs. And he recently did The Exorcist, one of the newer Exorcist movies in 2020. So it's like these people, they started here, but their careers continue to take off, you know, well beyond the time that they started with this film. Dan, would you, do you actually own it? Would you stream it, own it, or drown it in butter? I'm gonna say, you know, I've never owned this movie mm. and I've only revisited it a few times. And now after revisiting it so recently, I actually will own this one. Wow. There, yeah, there is a two pack that has, uh, I think Screen Factory has put it out. It's part one and part two on Blu-ray. So it's going to have a spot in your wall. In my wall. collection, yes. Do you need to start a third wall? I need a third house to start <laughs> a, a walls for my Blu-ray collections. I'm out of control with this. Do you know how much money you've spent? I don't want to know. <laughs> um, I'm a one and done. Yeah? Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to watch it. It was cute. It was cute. And I even did enjoy the ending when everybody gets in the cars and then the ghoulies pop up. Like for the sequel, it sets it up completely for that, but I don't think I'm gonna be watching this one again. See, I can see that because it was your first time watching it now. You're watching a movie from back then. Yeah. And it just, I guess it doesn't still own up to what it used to be. Still doesn't hold up. That's, what I'm, that's the phrase I'm looking for. It doesn't hold up like it did back in the 80s. For me, it did because I watched it back then, but, but for you, not so much. Now it actually makes me wanna go back and watch The Gremlins. Well, that's our review for Ghoulies, and we hope it makes you want to go out and watch it. And I hopefully didn't make you not want to go in the bathroom and use your own toilet anymore. <laughs> With that said, we have a much more grisly review coming up for our movie from 1977, I believe. Yep, you got it. Grizzly. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you next time. <laughs>